Hello everyone, I'm Brazen Eagle, and thank you for joining me here. So today, we have two articles that discuss immigration and how multiculturalism is tearing society, and especially Europe, within these two articles apart. So let's start with Breitbart. German populists surpass Merkel party in regional elections. The populist alternative for Deutschland, or the AFD, relegated the Christian Democratic Union, the CDU, of German Chancellor Angela Merkel into third place as they saw a surge of support in the region of Thuringia. The regional branch of the AFD in Thuringia, led by firebrand politician Bjorn Hook, or Hucke, managed to score 23.4% of the vote on Sunday, coming second to the far left, Die Linke, a descendant of the former East German Communist Party, who won 31% Deutsche Welle reports. The result left the CDU of Chancellor Merkel and third place with 21.8% of the vote. A big defeat for the German leader and her party, who have previously been beaten by the AFD in other eastern regions like Mecklenburg-Vorpommern in 2016 and then Brandenburg in 20 or early 2019. Mr. Hook, who has also been known for saying or speaking several controversial remarks in the past, commented on the Thuringia result saying, this is a clear sign that a large part of Thuringia says this can't go on, and added, we need renewal, this should be taken seriously. While the AFD has achieved strong results in the east of the country, formerly occupied by the Soviets until 1989, and in part down to this more conservatively minded today, no parties have so far publicly expressed a desire to form a coalition government with them. However, among the Thuringia CDU, there are disagreements on how to approach the populace with CDU member Michael Haim, leaving the possibility of cooperation with the AFD on the negotiating table, saying that a coalition between his party, the AFD, and the libertarian Free Democrats could be possible under certain conditions. Members of the CDU have also been highly critical of the party leader, Annegret Kampf-Karrenbauer, who took over the party leadership from Chancellor Merkel last year. Ms. kramp karen Karen Bauer, simply known as Ack in Germany, rebuffed her critics saying that she planned to stay on as leader of the party and that she was committed to remaining leader until the party's annual conference in 2020 at least, but added that she took some responsibility for the poor result. Well then, interesting. Now of course this is only a regional election in Germany, but I, and I'm, and I'm sure other people, have been watching the steady rise of the AFD, or Alternative for Deutschland. It is quite amazing to see that the traditional parties in Germany, the SPD, or the Social Democratic Party of Germany, really the Socialists, and the CDU, also known as the Christian Democratic Union of Germany, are failing. These two parties were the main parties in Germany for quite a while, but now they're, they're falling apart. The situation in Germany, like I said, at least in Thuringia, has gotten so bad that the region just elected Die Linke, or the left, which from our perspective in America is basically, literally, a communist party. Even the Breitbart article said that this party descended from the communist party when it was still under the DDR. Now... That's pretty bad, but like I mentioned earlier, the AFD got second place. And from Deutsche Welle, which, which is what the Breitbart article is based off of, these are the results. The CDU, the what we might call the Republican Party here in the United States, uh, the kind of right-wing party, even though they're not really very right-wing, uh, only got 21% of the vote. The left, or the communists in this case, got 31%. SPD got 8.2%, which is... Shocking. AFD got 23, the Greens, and then you have FDP, which was the supposedly Libertarian Party. That's big. This is huge. The Populist Party, the major Populist Party, the AFD, has overtaken the CDU, or Angela Merkel's party. Like I said, that's huge. Angela Merkel, and of course her policies, have helped crush her own party's support. That's bad. But you really don't hear a lot about the SPD and how they're being taken over by either the Greens or the left regarding all of Germany. But anyways, that being said, this could be a one-time fluke, but, you know, maybe it isn't. Time will tell, of course, regarding Germany and, of course, Western civilization's future. Obviously, at least in Thuringia, the people want solutions and the normal politicians aren't cutting it. Of course, we will see more of this when the federal elections in Germany occur in 2021. Now... Time for good old Sweden.
So, former Scania CEO warns Sweden heading for civil war as migrants set up state within a state. What, are they setting up like a peaceful Chinatown? Tell me more! Sweden is heading towards civil war due to uncontrolled mass immigration, a prominent businessman had said. The former CEO of truck maker Scania has warned that unless mass immigration or mass migration is curbed and the far-left government stops pussyfooting around the nation's migrant-related problems, Sweden could be in a state of civil war within a few years as lawless elements in migrant communities become more daring in showing their contempt for Swedish law and values and for the country's people. It's almost as if they don't care. In an interview with Sweb TV, mis businessman Leif Ostling argued that the rapid influx of new migrants from parts of the world where backward, patriarchal, theocratic cultures are the norm and women often have lower status than animals and who have not attempted or even shown any interest in trying to integrate into Swedish society is creating violent unrest as increasingly unhappy Swedes turn to nationalist and far-right extremist movements in the hope that someone can redress the balance after years of governments favoring immigrants over ethnic Swedes. We've taken in far too many people from the outside, and those who come from the Middle East and Africa live in a society that we left almost a hundred years ago, Usling said. Well, I don't know about a hundred years ago. Maybe a little bit longer than that. As well as no-go zones, the police and other emergency services springing up in many Swedish towns and cities, with rival gangs from various ethnic groups vying for control of the drug, contraband, and sex trades. Gunfights and grenade attacks have rocketed in many cities, notably Gothenburg and Malmö, with much of the unrest being linked to migrant gangs. Sexual assault and violent crime is also on the rise throughout Sweden. Grenade attacks and fatal shootings in Sweden are now described as a national emergency, according to a report. Not long ago, reports of migrant-related crimes problems, including gang wars, Organized crime, violence, and sex crimes derided as a far-right conspiracy theory by mainstream media, media, wait, media, media, but now there is deathly silence from the politically correct, liberal, and progressive publications that dominate Western media as denials become increasingly incredible. I'd rather, it's, just, it's better to just call them leftists. Anyways, Stockholm was shaken by three explosions in a single night last week, but these criminal out outrages did not even make the front pages or main news bulletin with violence rising the country's government seems more concerned with downplaying the problem and trying to maintain its image as a tolerant leftist socialist utopia rather than admitting there are uh, maybe a few problems and dealing with them three explosions in one night ought to be front page news in any first world national capital but when stockholm reverberated to the multiple blasts in the same night national broadcaster svt's nightly main news broadcast made no mention of the incidents relegating the news to its online news page instead one of the targets a syriac christian church has already been bombed twice in the past year in sweden such terrorism is no longer news so long as they are suspected to be the work of migrant groups that are not so much above suspicion as above the law. In 2018, there were 162 bombings reported to police and 93 reported in the first five months of the year. Of this year, the level of attacks is extreme in a country that is not at war, Crime Commissioner Gunnar Appelgren told SVT last year. Ostling underscored problems with integration by highlighting his own experience running Scania, where about 90 out of 100 Somali migrants hired to work for the company were fired or left because they were unable to arrive on time or work in teams. Other Swedish companies have experienced problems with migrant workers refusing to work with women or non-Muslims, insisting on stopping production lines for prayers or refusing to learn Swedish. And those are the small minority of new migrants that condescend to work. Hmm, it's almost as if they're not integrating for a reason. Usling believes the assimilation process, which doesn't exist, needed before migrants are ready to live as members of Swedish society, might take a full generation to accomplish. The businessman said he hoped that the country's problems could be fixed within 10 years, otherwise civil war could ensue, necessitating that the military be called out to deal with violent unrest in migrant areas. The far less socialist government's refusal to abandon its open-door immigration policy suggests the, only, the problem can only get worse over the next 10 years. In an article titled, It's Time for Sweden to Admit Explos Explosions Are a National Emergency, Colette's Paulina Newding goes into detail. Sweden has experienced a sharp rise in explosions in recent years, predominantly related to conflicts between warring criminal gangs. The use of explosives in the Nordic country is now at a level that is unique in the world for a state not at war, according to police. In response, the government issued a first-ever amnesty for explosives in the fall of 2018, 
allowing people in possession of such weapons to hand them over to police with immunity. But this didn't stem the tide. Some 50 explosions were reported in the first three months of 2019 alone, an average of more than one every other day, and an increase over the same period in 2018, a year that saw a record number of more than three blasts per week. That's pretty bad. Three blasts per week. Deadly shootings in Sweden have also risen by a factor of 10 in one generation, exacerbated by witness intimidation and a code of silence in the country's socio-economically weak immigrant areas, according to Newding. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, Sweden. This is the first country, of course, that I think of when you hear bombings in Europe or unrestrained mass immigration. That, or maybe the UK, or France, or maybe Germany, but probably Sweden. Now, this former CEO, Leif Usling, says that these migrants are terrible workers. They don't work hard, and sometimes they don't even show up to work. But, more importantly, they're not integrating. Or, really, we should call it, they're not assimilating. Because, well, because of the push for mandatory equality of outcomes, equality is a great thing, right? Especially when we push for equality of outcomes. Assimilation is terrible. It's looked at as if it was a bad thing. Oh no, oh no, no, no. You can't force your beliefs on someone else who comes to your country because... reasons. It's bad to have social harmony. It's terrible to be surrounded by people who are culturally similar to you. Now, the Swedish CEO says that assimilation is might take an entire generation before things calm down. You know, I don't live in Sweden, but I really doubt assimilation or integration is really happening. You know, like I said before, as someone who's in the United States, who is in the classroom and educating potentially future Americans, assimilation isn't being pushed. It's honestly kind of looked down upon. It's not about assimilating new people to the country. I'm going to let you know, though, that universities are pushing onto future educators, well, current and future educators, that you do not assimilate students. You do not integrate them into becoming culturally American, or even Swedish in this case. You cannot make them, you know, the same culturally as a native population, and I'm sure the problem's even worse in Sweden. Now, even the former CEO of a business understands that the push for unrelenting mass immigration from drastically different cultures is making normal people look for solutions in organizations that might get looked over normally. And that's why, like I said or brought up earlier, the AFD or the Alternative for Deutschland is looking better and better to a degree than the CDU in Germany. That's why I put these two articles together. It's not the right wing radicalizing people, it's the political left and their policies that are hurting the countries. Now, this article here, also from Medium, goes in details like no-go zones and violence from gangs and ethnic groups, you know, but if you're on the internet like me, that's really not a surprise. Multiculturalism doesn't work. It's never worked and will never work. It's just human nature, you know, but it will be interesting to see as time goes on as we go into 2020, 2021 in the future, as how Western civilization will slowly continue to crumble until there is some sort of pushback. When that starts, or who leads the pushback, I don't know. Probably not me, I'm too small of a channel, but anyways. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'm Brazen Eagle, and I hope you have a great day.